it's Ariana, your tarot life coach, bringing you your 2019 tarot scopes. First of all, I want to say I hope you have a very safe and happy new year and that you are very responsible as you celebrate. Secondly, thank you guys for being patient with me. These are going to be coming out very slowly because they do take me a lot of time to make while I'm also making personal videos for other 2019 reads. So you are still able to order these right now. I'll probably be doing them all the way until the end of January just because it's going to be 2019 for a couple of months, y'all. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so this is just going to be a look at each month with guidance from not only tarot, but numerology and um, any oracle card that wants to come out. So the oracle cards will be drawn beforehand. We will draw the tarot live it will, as I shoot the video and go that way. Some of y'all might have to look at me for a while. We might just look at the cards. It depends on how I feel as I'm recording them. This is my first time to shoot one of these videos, so be patient with me. Last year I did a shorter version of it. So let's talk a little bit about 2019. It is the year of the three. So what does that mean? Communication, creativity, expression. This um, number rep is represented in the tarot by the Empress, the world, and the hangman, right? And so you have to think about the Empress being very creative, the hangman being um, kind of stuck in suspension, right? Because they have to decide what they're going to surrender in order to have the universe. So this is going to be one of those years that you're going to have to creatively communicate and you're going to have to harness your creative energies in order to feel like you're accomplishing what's, ha what's happening. Now, if you are a three in the year of the three, just know that Jupiter is your ruling planet. If you're a three, you can add up your birth date, your birth month and year, and it's going to calculate what what number you're vibrating at, and that'll kind of give you a lot of um, information about how you operate in the world. All right. So if you're interested in a personal read for 2019, hit me up at Ariana Luciano at gmail.com or on the gram at Ariana Luciano. Be blessed, family. Hello, Leos. It's Ariana, your tarot life coach, bringing you your 2019 tarot scope, big baby. Big, big hugs, lots and lots of love, high fives, and some damn dirty shoulder rubs. What's up, Leo? Ah! It's our time, baby. It's our time. <laughs> All right, this is for Leo, sun, moon, and rising. Hey, 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 it's, it pays to be a Leo, right? And <laughs> we starting off the year with abundance. Anyways, this is our theme this year, is abundance. Lots of solar plexus energy. I feel like we're going to be in our element. However, this is telling you like planning and organizing your finances and your assets are going to be really important this year. Settle financial matters while you have the opportunity. So even now, if you're watching this and we're not in 2019 yet, start getting your money in order because good things are happening. The abundance is coming in. All right. Now, with that being said, with the past, present, and future card that we have coming in, it's Veron C. And this is for exceptional healers, all right? But this is overcoming. I feel like we're overcoming abundance and confidence issues this year. There is like all kinds of things coming in our way, it feels like. Now, in the lower part where you see Ganesh, right? Does it feel as if your dreams are always being dashed, everything gets in the way, nothing's going the right way? Well, Ganesh is here to offer you assistance to move through these obstacles, and it wants you to start over. It's, it's a great card for new enterprise and entrepreneurs. Ganesh wants to remove the obstacles. Now that we're in 2019, in the present, it's asking you to take a look at your environment. Um, Leos, you need to clean house emotionally, physically, and spiritually. Get things out of there that you no longer need so that you make room for new energy. Now, um, also creating a place for meditation and for, I would say, just a peace of mind. You're going to need a lot of peace of mind this year. Now, on the upper world, you have the goddess Ganga, right? And what aspects of your life would you just like to wash away? This will be one of those years that you will be needing spiritual baths. You will probably get really in tune with those things. A lot of running water, drinking lots of water, but even doing shower meditations, taking spiritual baths, like I said earlier, that's going to be one of these years that you need to get things out of your system physically and emotionally, and anything can be overcome, all right? 
Now, the cougar is coming in to kind of tell us how to work with Sundance energy. Sundance energy is no other than the hangman. It's attributed to card 12 in this deck. Now, the hangman comes right before death. So I feel like it's going to be really important for us to have the courage to get over what's keeping us hung up. We have got to transform and we've got to move into the areas of life where we can accept ourselves and accept what's coming our way. And here there's kind of like just hanging in there. And I also feel like this is going to be a splop, splat, spot light year, baby. Okay. This is going to be where everything is out on the forefront with this cougar energy coming in for Sundance. It's like, it is your time to dance in the sun, Leo. So a lot of times people think Leos are very arrogant. It's like, if we say, oh, I did this. They're like, oh, you're such a Leo. You're always bragging. And it's like, oh, so what am I supposed to say? That I'm not doing anything good and I fucking suck? Is that what you want? Because it's almost like when you toot your own horn, people take it the wrong way and think you're bragging on yourself or something. And in all reality, all you're really doing is just kind of putting it out there. So this is about focus and conviction and listening to your inner wisdom as you move forward. There's going to be a lot of energy with solar plexus coming in also. So let's go ahead and jump into January, February, and March, our first quarter of the year. So here's our theme. This is what we need to leave in 2018, and this is how we're going to get through it. All I got to say is... Holy hell, Leos, I don't know what we're doing, but we're, we're getting back to the nature of ourselves. Like, we're finding ourselves, we're letting go of this meek, poor me kind of personality, and we're moving forward. Now, your first cards came down to the number 121 because um, Abundance was card 1 and Dance uh, was the card 12, so it was before it, so it was 121. 121 is significant to unwavering faith and optimism, staying in your highest energy, vibrating very high as you're building a foundation because 121 comes down to the number four. This is a very foundational year. If you are doing um, a personal business or starting a new relationship, those kinds of things, this is a foundational year, okay? Now, personal power is coming in and, and this Siberian tiger is just telling you it's time to address your issues with power. It's time for you to reclaim your leadership. It's time for you to pull forward and say, no, not today, big baby. Okay. So understanding that tigers are predators and they come through and they know how to see things through the darkness. And this is the card why I bought this deck. This card speaks to me in a way that I didn't even know that's what it meant. But it's about getting rid of toxic relationships, toxic friendships, toxic environments. And that is our theme. Remember with Ganga, it's just time to clean everything out. And it's also important for you to realize that the things that are removing your energy or draining your energy need to be cut. And the way that you're going to do this at the beginning of the year, because I feel like Leo's, you're just coming in, you're like, enough is enough and I'm done with this. It's attributed to the number 21, which comes down to a three. 28 comes down to a 10, which comes down to a one, which once again, we're building the foundation with a four. All right. So personal power comes in. That's the theme. Building blocks reverse is being able to see the rotten pieces that got to go. Those rotten pieces are representative of people, places and things that are keeping you away from what you need to be doing, where you should be on your life path and how you see your life uh, rolling out. Right. Wolverine is telling you that's how the hell you're going to do it, Leo. You're a lot tougher than you are. And the thing is, is I feel like a lot of us have been dormant. We've been kind of laying low. We've been, you know, it wasn't our time right now. But this is your time. This is your time to shine. There's nothing wrong with being super motherfucking shiny. Okay? So do your thing, Leo. Now, let's see what the tarot has for us. I'm going to move this over for my notes. And this is for sun, moon, and rising. So take it how you like. I rolled, <laughs> you won't believe it, a four. <laughs> so let's see what's going on. Two, three, cut in the deck. Holy moly, free holies. We are having a breakthrough moment with Gemini, Libra, Aquarius energy, or this is your sun, moon, and rising. However, this energy is coming through and making sure that your house does not fall apart, making sure that your tower doesn't fall apart, your beliefs don't fall apart, and it's bringing in the truth, all right? Whoa, I had a lot of cards come out. So... January, it's the Three of Pentacles. It's time to work, 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 work. 
<laughs> and we have something coming to an end for us. We don't really like it. I have the Hermit card. I feel like you're going to be going within yourself, Leo. You're just going to go within yourself and you're going to make a decision. It's just time for a decision and you're going to be moving forward. However, you're willing to put the work in in January, all right? In January, we have the energy coming in. We have a full moon lunar eclipse on the 21st at zero degrees Leo. It's going to be one of those times that you have to think about what Leo signifies for you. Um, give yourself understanding that this is starting over. This is a zero. This is infinite possibilities, right? Now, with this energy that's coming in with this three of pentacles that's looking at this five of wands, what have you been afraid to put out there? Some of y'all may be dealing with the sign of Capricorn just because we have Capricorn coins all over the place. However, we have spider energy. Some of y'all have been thinking about starting something new, creating a new path, whatever it is, it's time to put yourself to work. It's time to get it out there. No matter how much conflict you've been feeling, because some of y'all have been feeling some really heavy conflict about it, you need to stay focused. January is going to be a time of work. So in January, your money is going to be super awesome, okay, because we have a lot about abundance coming in. So abundance, abundance, abundance. You are provided for in all ways. You have the buffalo that's significant to stand in your ground also, all right? Everything you need, you got it, but you're going to have to work for it, okay? It's not just going to be like, oh, here you go. Here's a lunch of money. Have a great day. This is you saying, hey, I'm going to revamp this. I'm going to do this, and I'm going to keep moving forward in order to get what I want, which leads us to February, February's energy is quite interesting with the five of wands. There's a lot of conflict going on because we kind of put our hopes and dreams into something that may not be working out for us. Some of us will be leaving relationships and some of us will be leaving jobs. And some of us are leaving a mindset that we've been holding on to that leaves us in a sense of lacking. There is nothing lacking, Leo. You have everything you need to be successful. It is how you look at the situation in order to maneuver your resources to move ahead. Now, in February, the new moon is in Aquarius, woohoo, and we have Mercury entering into Pisces. With Mercury entering into Pisces, think about how Piscean energy works. Think about Mercury. So our communication may a little be a little bit emotional during that time. Then we again have on the 19th, a full moon in Virgo at zero degrees. A lot of zero degree moons coming in, clearing this energy, right? However, we are in conflict, all right? And I don't know what we're in conflict about, but we're in conflict about something. Let's see here. Where is that deck? Right here, right in front of me. What will help with the Five of Wands in February? Oh, fork in the road, and it comes down to the number four. What have you been not wanting to do in February? I don't care if you get wrapped up in this Valentine feeling, baby. It's time to release. It's time to relax, relate, and release, and make a decision. You have been in this situation before. You have been looking down this road, but now it's time for you to make the decision. All right? In March, what we have going on with this Nine of Cups reversed. <laughs> Nine of Cups reverse is like the wish didn't come true. But I'm going to tell you, sometimes wishes don't come true because we either shortchange ourselves or the universe knows something better is coming, right? So we're going to clarify the Nine of Cups, but let's talk about a little bit what's going on in March. In March, we have the Mercury retrograde on the 5th. We have a new moon in Pisces on the 6th. Um, we have the sun entering into Aries on the 20th, and on the 20th, we have a full moon in Libra at zero degrees. So with that being said, I want to see what this Nine of Cups is kind of looking at us about, because it's looking at fork in the road, and it's like something isn't working for us. It's not working for us, okay? Like the abundance was going really good in January, and now we got to make some really tough decisions. So, luck be a lady big baby. So, ladybug is coming in. This might be a time that you connect more to the Virgin Mary. I attribute this card to the Virgin Mary. This is also a time for motherly energy, a lot of luck and love, a lot of luck and finances. All right? But this doesn't mean for you to go out and buy a whole bunch of lottery tickets. This is like calculated decisions in order to make things happen. All right? However, in January and February, be, be ready. There will be some endings. There will be some changes coming in. It's okay, change is good. It's just it's just not gonna end the way that you thought it was gonna end. However, endings are always leading us to new beginnings. Financially, it looks delicious. It looks wonderful as you're moving forward. It could be all this wonderful Jupiter energy we're having. However, you will be releasing toxic relationships and toxic situations. 
All right, now as we move into the second quarter of the year, our theme is invention, how we're gonna do it, and what we need to stop doing, okay? So our, with invention, it comes down to the number 26, which comes down to an eight. And this is us really communicating who and what and how we are going to move forward. It's really important to express those things, right? And you see these people drawing, you have beautiful tulips, painting. What are you trying to create? Are you trying to create a business, create a relationship, create a family, all of the above? However, whatever your focus is, Leo, and whatever you're planning on doing, the way to harness your energy is through swan. You are wisdom, you are grace, right baby? You are looking beautiful. This is appreciating the beauty inside you and all the way around you. So a lot of times people will be like, oh, well, yeah, you know, blah, blah, blah. But the truth of the matter is appreciate the, the, the struggle, appreciate what's going on and appreciate yourself because some of us leaving these toxic relationships have to kind of remember who we are. And you all remember the story of the ugly duckling. So you might feel really ugly at some point during this time, but you're looking at your invention, you're looking at this process, you're like, you know what? The world gave me lemons, but you know what? I'm about to make me some damn dirty lemonade and might even put some vodka up in there. Y'all know I love me some vodka. Anyway, this is not being afraid to make something out of what went wrong, all right? So using that grace, that Leonin grace, that smile, the beauty, the aesthetics that you can use to pull yourself forward. Now, clean it up is telling you to stop cleaning up the mess for somebody else. It's time for you to focus on yourself. It's time for you to look at who and what is going on, pay attention to you, do what needs to be done for you, and stop worrying about everyone else. Woo, Leo. So, what's going on in April? Let's cut the deck here. Let me give it three shuffles. One, two, three. Overall for us. Okay, so some of us are, some of us are dealing, oh my goodness. Some of us are dealing with the sign of Capricorn, Taurus, or Virgo. Okay, a lot of Taurus energy coming in, but this is also Cancerian energy. This is a victory over a Capricorn, Taurus, or Virgo, or a victory over a financial matter is coming through for you. Okay? All right. Sorry, this one fell out third. This one fell out first. We have the Three of Wands, Two of Cups reversed, goes into the Six of Cups. I think some of us are leaving relationships, all right? If we had a relationship with a, an earth sign, especially, uh, that's going to be ending. Not for everybody. Please don't. If you're in a marriage, don't think that I'm telling you it's going to end. But if it's a toxic one, this would be the time that it would happen. So in April, we have the Three of Wands reversed. We have going on in April, on the 10th of April, we have a Jupiter retrograde in Sagittarius. We have a full moon in Libra. Then on the 24th, Pluto goes retrograde. And on the 29th, Saturn goes retrograde. So this is us kind of looking at what everybody else has and wondering, like, where do I fit in? Where is my beauty? Where is my grace? Where is, you know, I was doing so good those first three months of the year. What happened? What's going on? Overall energy is the tower reversed, okay? I feel like that card really has something for us. So let's see what's going on with this three of wands energy. Okay, and I keep rolling threes. Byzantine, okay. I'm gonna go to the Byzantine tarot and see what's going on there. Damn. So it's the five of cups. Um, oh, do we have any more? Let me make sure. With the five of cups coming in in April, I kind of feel like there's going to be some losses. You're going to get some information about something you didn't think was possible, possibly a partnership or somebody who was supposed to help you to move forward. It's going to be really important for you to trust your intuition since this is the high priestess. This is Sophia. And she's coming in and she's like, hey, it is what it is. And some of y'all are going to get some extreme spiritual downloads during the month of April, possibly with these retrogrades, especially with Saturn, depending on where it falls in your in your chart. You may be getting some intense downloads, like ancestor downloads, uh, guides giving you information on like what's going on ahead of you, right? Trust that information that's coming in. Okay, that's very interesting energy coming in. And let's see what your guides are trying to tell you. Animal Kingdom. So, 
Gemini just got this card also. So dealing with the animal kingdom, we're looking at this energy. I'm going to tell you just because these are the animals that are showing up in this card doesn't necessarily mean that this is the animal that you might be working with. So you might notice in the month of April, you have a bunch of butterflies around you. You might notice that like for me, when I start seeing the vulture all the time, I know that there's a lot of transformation coming. So you might have your own animal that you're drawn to, right? Or that's being drawn to you. But in this card, the animal kingdom is attributed to card number four. So I feel like in April, when it's the fourth month, this is the card four. We are really building some foundation. Foundations. So if you're hitting with the bear, this is like be ready for the challenges ahead, but you have to have confidence to pull forward. The wolf wants you to see things very clearly and make sure that it's your intuition that you're following. If it's with the owl, this is about trusting your discernment and the messages from your guides and pay attention to your dreams, especially around the full moon in Libra on the 19th. Now, if you're drawn to the deer, this is about unconditional and love as you're moving through with issues with the family. And then with the eagle, this is perspective, being having a lot of patience, connecting to your, to your source or to your creator as you make this decision with your intuition. All right. In May, we have the two of cups reversed. There is going to be an ending of a partnership or a situation where you feel very drained. All right. Because in the five of cups in this card, right, you notice that there's um, one cup in her hand and one cap, one cap, one cup in the other hand. And it's like she's like smirking almost like hee hee. But it's almost like whoever's trying to pull the wool over your eyes, you're going to find out about it. Now, this is May. So in May, we have on the fourth, the new moon in Taurus. Mercury enters into Taurus on the 6th, the 15th, Venus moves into Taurus, lots of grounded energy, right? And we have a full moon in Scorpio on the 27th. And with this Two of Cups reverse, it, it's like a lot of times I almost want to say like, hey, you might have a breakup to have a makeup because we have the Two of Cups leading to the Six of Cups. Very interesting energy. Okay, we have the Two of Cups and it's like we're realizing our treasure we're realizing our worth and I kind of feel like be very careful telling people how much money you have coming in Leo because a lot of times we do things out of the kindness of our heart and people can take advantage of it but this is about realizing manifestation realizing that good things are finally coming to you even though you may have to walk away from a situation that no longer serves you all right now in June we have some pretty energy in June full moon and Sag on the 17th Neptune moves into Pisces. Neptune is retrograde in Pisces. Sun enters into Cancer, right? Very pretty energy. Six of Cups, enjoying the pleasures of life. We're finally having a good time. You might even be meeting someone new during this time. Or you just might be feeling yourself at this time because things are working in your favor. You've left something behind that's no longer working for you. All right, let's see which card this is because a lot fell out. And some of y'all will be dealing with children during this month. Maybe they're on vacation because I always think about with the giraffe, it's the mother totem for me. And she's bending down. She's kissing her little baby giraffe. You have the soulmates with the um, parrots around you. Very beautiful energy coming in. And this is also attributed to the number eight, communication, travel, moving. And the tribe is telling you also, like, pay attention to the way that you... Um, are working with people trying to understand that they're coming from their the best place that they can you know that everyone's trying to do the best that they can at the moment and that not everyone sees things the same way as you do all right some of y'all may be rekindling something with someone from the past because of the six of cups but the tribe is about being understood being around people who really understand you some of us may be moving away from friendships that we no longer fit into because we have moved on or we just see things differently. I kind of want to get a little bit more on this tribe. Let me do the Byzantine. Okay, we're going to go with the Byzantine again for the tribe and see what this Six of Cups is about. Okay, I'm telling you, just got a lot of Six of Cups coming out. Okay. All right, we have the I'm sorry, I was using my pendulum. The Empress and the Lovers Upright. This is going to be a time for you to make really wise decisions. Some of y'all may be meeting the sign of Gemini. 
Some of y'all may be deciding to say, you know what, I think I'm ready to take this to the next level. But you're also keeping in mind that your finances are your finances. You're creating your abundance. Because if you look at the bottom of this card, you see all that fruit there? And then it's the three wise men, and she is like draped in gold. Do not forget your work during June, okay? Because your abundance, you know that you have a lot of abundance, and you're going to meet somebody more than likely around June, or things are going to get hot and heavy in June, all these vacations, all these good things, and you're moving forward. Because of the Six of Cups and then this, the lovers with the number six, which is the number 66, this is about trusting your intuition, all right? Now, remember, you had Sophia and the Empress this month. So trust your intuition how you move forward, all right? Now, let's go into the third quarter of the year, and hopefully my camera does not die on me. I really hope it doesn't. Let's see what July has for us. July is one of those times that good things are coming. Now, if this is not about love for you, okay, this is going to be about you making the right decision to move up into another position because of those three wise men on the bottom. That's the vibe I get. Now, let's move into the third quarter, July, August, and September. So in July, things are gonna start coming together for you. You're gonna start seeing things a little bit more clearer because you have to stop giving out of imbalance. You're starting to balance things. For some, I feel like you're gonna be in a relationship, it's gonna knock you off your socks, you're gonna miss work, you're not gonna to wanna to work, business is gonna get off or whatever. So it's gonna be really important for you to stay in the moment because there is a possibility for them to move you into leadership. All right, because that's what the medicine card is about. And on his neck, he has this beautiful um, amulet of Gaia. Okay, like, no, like the flower of life. Sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. Uh, and this is attributed to the card 20, which comes down to the number two, which is about contracts moving forward and there's balance. So wherever there is imbalance, the medicine is coming through, which is the name of the, the, the card with the Indian on it, the Indian chief. And this is about you sharing your knowledge with others, okay? You're a natural healer, whether for counseling energy practice, holistic or Western medicine, but you're encouraged to explore your gifts more. And if you see in this one, this is an even exchange of gifts. I'm gonna tell you, Leo, it's gonna be really important for you to stop giving in and out of balance. That has to come to an end. This comes to 36, which comes to a nine. The thing about that is a lot of times people will take advantage of you because you're always like, oh, I'll do it for free or no worries, I'm going to do it. And you're doing everything and no one's doing anything for you. But this is you moving into leadership, whether it's taking the lead of your life or taking, you know, taking the lead in a company. July does have some heavy energy. OK, I'm just going to be real honest. So let's see what's going on in July. Four of Pentacles. There's that Capricorn energy again. <laughs> ah, Hermit Reverse. We got a lot of Earth like energy coming in. Sagittarius. And that bottom card is the Empress again. Be very careful if you're not trying to have a baby because you do have a lot of fertility energy with the Empress coming out in two decks. But I'm also going to tell you if you're birthing a business, this is the year to really get it going. All right? Birth in a relationship. This is going to be one of those fertile, fertile times for you. Now, July, we have a new moon, total solar eclipse in Cancer, 10 degrees on the 2nd. And then Venus enters into Cancer. I am countdown for that day, baby. Mercury, retrograde, 4 degrees. Leo, Chiron, retrograde, 5 degrees. Aries, and this is on the 8th. Then we have on the 16th, a full moon, partial lunar eclipse in Capricorn on the 24th. And then it's our time, baby. The sun enters into Leo and it's all beautiful, all right? Now, this Four of Pentacles is coming in and it's looking at the Hermit reversed in August. So I'm telling you, it's gonna be important in July. Do not overspend your money. Make sure everything is very secure and be very tight-lipped about whatever you're going to be doing in July because you need a break. There's going to be a vacation in July because I have this 10 and this nine right next to each other. So it's either gonna be July or August that you'll be going on a vacation. And that vacation, you need to make sure that you save up a lot for. And with this 10 of wands coming out reversed in this deck right now, the way that the um, burdens are falling off, July is a heavy month for you, so make sure that you put up money from the beginning of the year so that when July hits, you don't get hit very hard, 
All right, and then I have the, oh, 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 okay. If <laughs> you are starting something in July, you have the Ace of Pentacles, you have the moon. Some of y'all might be getting pregnant or planting that seed of intention. And there is something about stardom. So some of y'all might be being asked by a earth sign, okay, to do something that puts you in the spotlight, whether it's online or some kind of broadcasting, because the moon is illuminating and we have an initiation. So July is going to bring in a lot of positive energy for you. Now, with that being said, the Hermit comes in for August, and this is attributed to Virgo energy. However, this is reversed. <clears throat> so I kind of feel like in August, you're going to pull back because you've been out in the limelight a little bit too much. You've been in the forefront, and you're trying to find your balance. Jupiter goes direct on the 11th of August, 14 degrees Sagittarius. Mercury will be moving into Leo, so we will be expressing ourselves very courageously on the 11th, and Uranus goes retrograde six degrees Taurus, all right? Now, we do have a full moon in Aquarius, and then the sun enters into Virgo. So during this time, it's almost like, um, and then we have a new moon in Virgo on the 30th at six degrees. It's like we're kind of retracting. We're kind of pulling into ourselves. We're grounding ourselves more, trying to understand what's going on. And I feel like there's some unease around this time, probably because the vacation is over, the fun and games is done, and now we have to get back at it, right? Now we got to get back to work in August. School starts again, but there is something about the hangman reversed right now. Whatever you're caught up in, because we have the Ten of Wands reversed, we have the hangman reversed. I almost feel like whatever you're caught up in, Release it. Surrender is the answer. Surrender your ego. Surrender the fear that you're not going to make a great leader. Whatever it is that you're not good enough. Because in September, this is going to take a lot of patience because you have like this like, oh, let's do it, do it, do it kind of energy with Sagittarius energy coming in for temperance. So patience is going to be needed in September and September is a much more planetary calmness going on. We have a full moon in Pisces. 21 degrees on the 14th, and then Saturn goes direct on the 18th. But with this tree of life that's coming in is I kind of feel like whatever was flipped turned upside down in August, by September, you are going to be very grounded. And we have a spirit guide who came in reverse. So let's see what he has to say. I'm sorry I'm talking so fast. I'm just like, I'm so afraid that my camera is going to die. I'm like, gosh. The badger. Didn't we get the badger earlier? Anyways, dig in and see it through to completion. You are stronger than what you think you are. I always think about the honey badger. Baby, you can do this. I don't know what people have been telling you. The transformation can happen. The spotlight's going to happen. The stardom. Whatever it is you're doing, July, August, and September, do not quit because it's too much by september you're gonna be like damn it to hell i'm freaking tired but don't stop baby don't quit because the badger is like come on we got to do this we got to keep going and you got to think about badger energy is like it will tear you up all right so maybe that's why in august we kind of go within ourselves and we're pulling back a little bit all right with that being said we are finally down to the end of the year Going into October, November, and December, the theme is heavenly signs. What we need to stop, what we need to tie up is coming to the edge. And how we're going to do it, there's that badger, is the badger with the number 11. Interesting, huh? It's like a soulmate number. That 11 is that 20, I want to say 22. It comes back to that 2, right? Comes back to us having to figure out the contract, the relationship, or the partnership. Now, the heavenly signs during October, November, December, you will be getting downloads like crazy. Be ready. You're going to see butterflies, feathers, flowers, songs. Your guides are on high. Like they're trying to tell you it's time. It's time. Get ready. Get ready. Because you're not wanting to take that risk, which is telling you to come to the edge. You have to stop getting in your own way. 
And the way you're going to do that is with badger energy. And badger in the Nahuali is really interesting because the badger is about working with your shadow and denial. It's like you're denying yourself the spotlight. You're denying yourself the success that you deserve. And so this is telling you to go internally into those dark places that you're afraid that someone's going to see or that the world's going to see or whatever and work with those and love those parts of yourself. And it makes me think of Brene Brown, The Shame and the Guilt. I'm telling you, Braving is such a wonderful book. You should check it out. Now, this is where the strength is telling you not to stop. During October, November, December, you're probably exhausted. You've been birthing so many great ideas. Things are going your way. You know, you had a little bit of a hiccup, but then you got back on it. You can't expect for a year to go without any hiccups. There's always going to be something that like a bump in the road and that bump is meant to stop you from going down the wrong way. So let's give this three shuffles. I'm cutting the deck and I'm cutting right here. Look at this. Um, coming to a major decision, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius energy and getting rid of the mask getting rid of manipulation. I almost feel like some of us are, will be with a Gemini, Libra, or Aquarian energy this at this point, and we're ready to move forward. So let's see what October has. October, there we are, the King of Wands, setting it on fire. Ah, November is gonna be real good. I got excited, sorry. And December, we have strength reversed. And then we're back at the Empress again, behind the Empress. There we are as the Queen of Wands. So I kind of feel like we are extremely in our element towards the end of the year. So in October, Pluto goes direct on the third. Mercury also enters into Scorpio on the third. Venus enters into Scorpio on the eighth. We have a full moon in Aries, 20 degrees. And then we have the Mercury retrograde on the 31st. So we have a lot of energy in October. However, this is us burning the candle at both ends. And Nuska ain't got time for no obstacles. Nuska ain't got time for nothing. He is moving forward. He doesn't care what anybody says. Okay, I'm going to go with the Byzantine. And let's see what Nuska wants us to know. So there is something about the hangman. I just had the hangman come out again. The hangman is coming out upright this month. Oh shoot, everything fell out. So I kind of feel like, oh no, it's reversed again. We are getting in our own way. We need to surrender to whatever it is that's, that wants to happen, all right? Because it's going to work in our favor. So let's see here. I had a lot of cards come out. Did you want to come out? Upright. Okay. The tower. I'm using my pendulum because so many fell out. Nope. No. Okay. So surrender so that the tower situation may happen. And the way that I feel like this is coming in is like, oh, we really, we're burning our candle at both ends. We're wanting to do everything for ourselves. However, it's, it's really hard to do everything by yourself all the time, especially when you're creating something new, right? I'm trying to see what wants to help us with that energy. What can help us in October? We have the dragonfly. We need to remember who we are and not to get caught up in that illusion. And remember that we had the magician reverse when we first started, right? When I cut the deck. So I feel like what's going to happen is we are going to be burning the light so bright that we're going to see those things, those hangups, those shadows, those things that we've been holding ourselves back from. They're going to be illuminated really brightly, okay? We're going to see them. We're going to transform and we're going to move forward to being who we really are. In November, be ready for the spotlight if you have an online business if you're doing something online i do feel like this is like you really getting yourself out there i also feel like venus is going to be blessing you which venus will be moving into sagittarius on the first on november and i feel like it's going to bless you with how about say fish no with fish with fertility all right fertility where lots of yellow because she is draped in yellow this is going to be the month of confidence for you Mercury goes direct on the 20th. We have a new moon in Sag and then Nerp Ner Ner Neptune goes direct on the 27th. And I kind of want to see what the star has for us because it's like really beautiful energy. 
It's like now that we know who we are, we're past this illusion with Dragonfly. We're not hung up on anything. The tower has happened. We're in our element. And I feel like the tower is happening for some of us dealing with somebody who's keeping us hung up on the illusion. We're not, we're not playing with it anymore. This is my retrograde card, deep knowing. We just know you're going to meet somebody, you're going to hang out with somebody, you're just gonna know that person's gonna have a really strong impact in your life. And I feel like the planets are just going to be in alignment for you during November. Trust the energy that's coming in because it's carrying you through so that you can tie up those loose ends with the badger, all right? Now, in December in 2019, on the 2nd, Jupiter goes into Capricorn. We have a Jupiter square Chiron on the 8th, full moon in Gemini. Chiron goes direct in Aries on the 12th also. And then on the 26th, some really interesting energy. We have a new moon annular solar eclipse in Capricorn, 4 degrees. So that's leaving. I feel like some people are coming back to us because in one of the retrogrades. Someone's going to be coming back to you guys in the retrograde when okay november what the end of october we had a retrograde right in december i just feel like somebody's coming back with the strength reversed don't let it get in the way don't let that illusion get in the way of what you've built because i feel oh yeah you're gonna find out information also that you're gonna be like are you kidding me because the seven of arrows just flew out. Oh man, let's see what else is going on here. Is it this card? Is it this card? No, okay. Uh, the seven of arrows in a situation with an earth sign. And it's gonna be like, okay, it's gonna be like between an earth sign and an air sign. So you're gonna have to make a choice between these two, right? And you have to be very clear on your intentions. And I'm going to tell you which one to pick because everyone has a different life going on. Now, at the end in December, it's almost like I feel like this earth sign is trying to convince you of something. And you're just not, you're not going to go for it. It's not what you want. Okay, let's see what guidance we have once the, once the shit hits the fan in December and we have to make a decision. Understand that, and he's wearing yellow that you're on your path, you need to take one step at a time. November and December wear lots of yellow and they're gonna be coming in messages from Venus, okay? Pay attention to where your Venus is uh, during these last three months because I'm telling you, somebody's coming back that you thought was completely gone and you are not gonna want to allow that energy to, I wanna say, interrupt what you already got going on, all right? Don't get it twisted, baby. Now, <sighs> Coming in for your finances and your career is community. And I feel like you're gonna be breaking away. This is you actually setting a new tone, a new stance for yourself. Even like, um, I wanna say hot fire. <laughs> like it's gonna be hot fire for you. But I feel like you're gonna be moving towards people, places, and things that support you more. Community is attributed to number eight, which is about travel. I do think you're in travel more this year. I also feel like you're gonna be communicating more clearly. But you're going to be finding a community that accepts you for who you are, whether you are at a new place at work or new people are coming in. You're just going to be really, really supported. Health wise, your hobbies are going to bring new life to you, which is very interesting that this came out. Actually, Gemini got this card, too. I just did Gemini video. Um, new life can be either you're changing your health regimen and it becomes a hobby. But whatever you're doing is going to be birthing something wonderful in your life. And it's going to be out of a hobby, more than likely. But your health needs to be very grounded during this time. So make sure that you're taking care of those lower three chakras. When it comes to love, Leos, you're finally going to find that unconditional love, whether it's in a partnership or relationship or finally finding it within yourself. I do feel like we're going to be working a lot with expression with our throat chakra being that we had um, the Siberian tiger with all that blue. And now we have the unconditional love right here. And this is also if you look by the end of the year, you will be birthing something beautiful. Some of us will be getting I just feel like there will be 
actual babies being born because we have the divine mother and then we have unconditional love so i do feel mother mary is coming through for us or whatever deity you associate with being the divine mother um is going to be trying to connect to leo this year so fertility will be on high for you make sure that you pay attention to that and you may be having a lot of babies around you or a lot of children a lot of new ideas a lot of new things being birthed so make sure that you're loving yourself unconditionally during this time now we've had the empress come out like three times in different time at uh, different cards and different moments of the year so be aware that fertility is there and if you're not trying to have a baby you know what you got to do but if this is the fertility to birth your business it's a go this year it's a go i will say virgo it's a go this year leo all right whatever you wanted to do this is your path unfolding that does not mean it's not going to be hard but leos you are strong enough to push through and you always shine like the star that you are. So with that being said, big, big hugs, lots and lots of love. If you're interested in a personal or private read, hit me up at arianaluciano at gmail.com or on the gram at arianaluciano. Be blessed, fam.